Often when companies bring a new product to market, they have all kinds of reasons. They'll say things like, well, it's better because of this and you should buy it because of that. And you think, oh yeah, that's not really true. But in this case, ZF, they are correct. Heated seats do not make sense when you can have a heated seat belt. Seriously, it is a much better choice when it comes to saving your car's battery. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. Thank you for tuning in. And you know what? Heated seats, they are, well, a lot of people love them. Personally, I'm not a big fan. I'm a very warm-bodied person. Never really been into that sort of thing. But I know there are many, many people who just, just have to have them. They love them. They think it's this amazing experience. But actually, they don't make any sense when you think about it. Three-point seat belts have come a long way since Volvo gave away the patent for them for free many decades ago. Not many people know that, but yeah, Volvo had a patent on three-point seat belts. I don't think that should have even been legal, but they did. But then they gave it away. Some automakers are cramming airbags inside them, but ZF has a different idea. I think a better idea. Don't get me wrong, airbags are great, but I'm not so convinced that putting an airbag inside a seat belt is a great solution. Some automakers say that the heat belt makes more sense than the heated seat. As the name implies, the heat belt takes the shape of a heated seat belt. It's just sort of like a puffy seat belt and it serves as a warm hug. It's primarily intended to give EVs a boost in efficiency during cold weather. Now, obviously some companies recently have been targeted for their issues in cold weather and really there was a recent thing where the south korean government charged tesla i think it was 2.1 million us dollars for not disclosing the fact that in extremely cold temperatures the range of their vehicles will drop now the interesting thing is hyundai didn't do that either i checked on hyundai's website in south korea they mentioned nothing about it so that's an interesting move and i think that was partly due to the way that South Korea felt about the IRA. That was their response, that was their retaliation. But the key point is here that yes, it affects all vehicles, especially those without a heat pump. All vehicles will lose range when it's extremely cold. Now, one of the cars that loses the most range based on tests done in Norway of lots of cars at the same time on the same route is the Toyota BZ4X. In fact, it was highly criticized in Norway by various media who asked Toyota to comment. They said, this vehicle loses nearly 50% of its range in cold temperatures. What is going on? Toyota haven't responded yet, obviously. Now, one of the things you can do to not reduce your range is either to have heated seats on and no heating on. That's a big benefit. Better than that would be to simply have a heated seat belt. It would be much more efficient. The reason being is the car will use much less battery power to warm up a heated seat belt versus either warming up the whole cabin or warming up the entire seat. While this may seem like maybe it's a gimmick or it's just ZF trying to sell something, it actually makes a lot of sense. The same thing was actually said about heated steering wheels back, well, years ago. ZF has done the numbers, they say, and they estimate an EV's range in low temperatures can increase by as much as 15% by moving away from current systems to using a heated seat belt. I think they're probably right. The built-in heating conductors are embedded into the seatbelt to provide a uniform feeling of warmth while minimally increasing the thickness of the webbing. If you think about it too, it makes a lot of sense because in the front of your body, you have nothing covering you, right? When you're sitting in a seat, you have the back of the seat covering your body. So there's at least something covering you, but on the front of you, you're just it's just a, basically an area where you're gonna lose the most heat. Using only 70 watts of power, the seatbelts can be heated up to 40 degrees Celsius which is 104 degrees Fahrenheit. And ZF says its heat belt behaves like a regular seat belt, meaning a car would not have to go through any modifications at all to actually accommodate them. The heating conductors are woven into the seat belt structure and the location for the contact elements for the electrical heating circuits was chosen to not interfere with ball operation or retraction. Consequently, the standard belt retractors still work and the level of safety remains identical. Could actually even be better because they're a little bit puffier and a little bit softer. So 
it's possible that in a crash, that would be a nicer thing to have, you know, restrict hard against your body. Now, Moto1.com says it should be mentioned a heated seatbelt is not an absolute premiere. In late 2018, Ford filed a patent with the USPTO publishing a 31 page document detailing how the technology actually worked. So they wanted to make them before ZF, possibly. Several variations of the concept with different designs were illustrated, but the idea was pretty much the same. About one year later, Mercedes introduced the GLE-based experimental safety vehicle, or the ESF, and that one had heated seatbelts. So in some ways, they already exist, although no customers actually have them right now that I'm aware of. It's still unclear whether automakers intend to actually use this technology instead of heated seats. It's sort of like people have gotten used to heated seats, would you want to take it away from them? No, but I think why not give them the option? Give them the heated seatbelt, give them the heated seats. If it's extremely cold, they can choose whether or not they want to reduce their range or whether or not they want to increase their range. Personally, I think this is a brilliant idea. I don't believe a heated seatbelt would be all that expensive to manufacture. If it can have, say, even just a 5% improvement on range, that would be like saving thousands of dollars being able to put less batteries in your car. Now, yeah, that might be relevant if you're living in a hot environment where it's never gonna affect you, that's possible. But if you're living in somewhere cold where you're gonna be affected for much of the year by cold temperatures, then this makes sense. In fact, it's so simple, it's genius. I love it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.